This video will show how you can use a Raspberry Pi Pico as a temperature display. This uses a tiny 0.9 inch OLED display with an AM2320 temperature sensor. In this case I've used a different variant of the Pico which is the tiny 2040 from Pimeroni. This is based around the same microcontroller which is the RP2040 created by the Raspberry Pi. There are a few differences between the tiny 2040 and the Raspberry Pi Pico. The first and most obvious is the size. The tiny 2040 has been designed to be as small as possible. It has only 8 digital pins and 4 analogue pins. Along with the power pins this gives the total of 16 pins, excluding the debug ones. It's also narrower. If you're using a breadboard then it gives you one extra row of holes. They've replaced the single colour LED with a three colour LED. Note that this is just an LED, it's not an EO pixel which they use on some of their add-on boards. The Tiny2040 uses a USB-C connector instead of a micro USB connector used on the Pico. They've also included a reset button as well as a boot button. This is something that people have been complaining about on the Pico as without it you may need to disconnect and reconnect the USB connector when updating code. One thing though is that once this is connected on a breadboard then it's hard to get to the reset button anyway. So whilst I think it's a good idea it's not quite as convenient as I hoped. The Tiny2040 has the same type of pin connectors which you'll likely want to solder headers to. It also includes the same castellation on the pins for mounting on another board. But note that due to the microcontroller being mounted on the underside, it doesn't lay flush. The alternative, if vertical space is not an issue, is to use a male to female headers, much like Pimeroni use on their Explorer base. One thing about the Tiny2040 is that it costs more than twice as much as the Pico. That's a lot more for an extra button and less pins, but the reason that it's so useful is because of the size, which is much smaller than the Pico. The cost is still very reasonable compared with other microcontroller based boards. It's just that the Pico has brought the cost down so much and I expect it would be difficult to get that kind of pricing without much bigger economy of scale. If you design the circuit around the Tiny2040 then it should be easy enough to replicate that on the Pico. But note that if you have something designed for the Pico then you may need to remap some of the GPO pins to some of the pins that are available on the Tiny2040. The Tiny is certainly going to be a good controller for wearable projects but may also be a good choice anywhere that space is the main factor. The temperature sensor I'm using here is the AM2320. This is similar in appearance to the DHT11 which I've used in previous projects. The AM2320 can use a single wire interface like the DHT11 uses but it also includes support for I2C which is what I've used here. I've created a separate video explaining I2C which may you may want to watch if you're not familiar with how that works. I'll also explain a little bit more about this later. The AM2320 is also much more accurate than the DHT11. The DHT11 has an accuracy of plus or minus 2 degrees Celsius. The AM2320 has an accuracy of plus or minus 0.5 degrees Celsius, which makes it much more suitable for monitoring room temperature. Whilst the DHT11 and similar DHT22 were popular in the past, I think the AM2320 is the best choice for most purposes now. To use in I2C mode, then you need to connect from left to right as VDD, such as 3.3 volts, SDA, serial data, ground, and then SCL, serial clock. The AM2320 has a fixed I2C address, which is 0x5C. There is no way of changing this address, which is a little frustrating as it means you can only have one device connected to the I2C interface. There are some ways around this, such as by disabling power or using a bidirectional enable pin, but this is a significant limitation of the AM2320, although not an issue for this project. To display the temperature, I'll be using a tiny 0.91 inch OLED screen. This is a tiny monochrome screen with an easy to read display which can display text or monochrome graphics. The screen has a resolution of 128 by 32 pixels. I actually bought this to create a departure sign for a model railway but I thought it would make a good fit for this circuit as well. 
These are available mounted on different boards. This version is on a very thin PCB with the I2C connector pins at one side, but other suppliers have these mounted on boards with the connectors underneath and possibly mounted holes. One thing to be aware of with these displays is they are made of individual organic LEDs. These will deteriorate when used over a long period of time, e.g. a thousand hours. So they may not be the best choice for displays that will be constantly switched on. These have an I2C interface which needs just four connections to the microcontroller. These are usually clearly marked on the PCB that the display is mounted on. Like the temperature sensor, these have a fixed I2C address, in this case 0x3C. While it's not a problem for this project, this is quite frustrating as I would like to have the ability to use multiple displays from a single I2C bus. Turning off power to the display is not an option, so the only way to have multiple devices on a single bus is to have some kind of enable circuit on the I2C signals. This diagram shows how these are connected to the Tiny2040 or Pico. You can use either interchangeably. The location of the physical pins is different, but otherwise the GPIO ports are identical. You'll notice I've included two pull-up resistors which are required for I2C. There are pull-ups in this Pico that you can enable, but these would be quite weak. So this is based around 3.3 kilo ohm resistors which will give a better pull-up. With this all wired up, it's just a case of installing some libraries and writing some code to read the temperature and display it on the screen. It took about 100 lines of code in total. I'll show you where I downloaded the libraries from, although I've bundled these in with the source code, so there's no need to download these yourselves if you just want to try this project yourself. This is the library for the AM2320 temperature sensor. And this is the library for the OLE display. It's included in the MicroPython repositories, but doesn't appear to have been made to the Raspberry Pi MicroPython image. I've copied both of the libraries into a new GitHub repository, so you can just download the source code from one site. You can download the code from github.com slash penguintutor slash rpi dash pico dash temperature. There's also a link to the, my web page in the video description. You just need to upload the files to the Pico or the Tiny. You can do this by using the rshell command to upload the files to slash pyboard, or you can just copy and paste these into a new file in the Thony editor. This is the MicroPython directory, the am2320.py and ssd1306.py files are for the libraries I mentioned previously. I've added my own files, tempdisplay.py which is the main code to run, and temperaturebuffer.py, which is a very basic ring buffer for holding the data for the graph. The main.py file is used if you want the code to run automatically when powered on, without needing to start it from Thony. If you don't want it to run automatically, then don't include the main.py file, or save it as an empty file. I'm just going to concentrate on the temp display file here. It starts with some imports. The machine is the normal MicroPython hardware imports. The SSD 1306 library supports different protocols. In this case, it's the I2C library, also known as I2C. And this makes use of FrameBuff and Sys. You can find out more about the FrameBuffer and some of its features in the MicroPython documentation. You can see that it has the ability to create some basic shapes using lines and pixels. It also has the ability to create text, which is always 8x8 pixels in size, and to copy a frame buffer over the existing frame buffer using Blit. This is how you can show simple bitmap images on the display. An alternative to using text is to use the Writer class, which allows different size fonts. I haven't tried that, as it's not really necessary for such a small screen, but I have included a link in the description for anyone that is interested. The AM2320 is then imported along with the temperature buffer class. Finally, I import the uTime module, which allows us to create a time delay between each of the reads, as we don't need it updating constantly. I've included the program in a function called main. This keeps the code from into a single function within the tempdisplay.py file. It starts by setting up details of the I2C device, which is used by both the temperature sensor and the OLED display.
and then define some variables. These are used to set the position of the text on the screen and to define a valid range for the temperature. Then there is a while one loop which will run forever. It reads the temperature and checks to see if it's in a valid range. If not, and I often get spurious readings over a thousand degrees Celsius, then it goes back to the start of the while loop and tries again. The display then creates text objects to show the temperature and humidity. And then it draws a graph of the temperature across the bottom of the display. This is the most recent entry on the right hand side, so that it shows the temperature change over time. This is done by storing the values in a circular buffer and then displaying an appropriate pixel for each sample. One of the negative things of doing this on the Pico is that it doesn't have a real time clock or any way of checking the current time so it's always an approximate relative value. The code sleeps for a short while before updating. The more regular the sampling, the more detailed that the graph will be. But then the time period shown will be less, so it may not accurately show a sensible trend. You may therefore want to increase the sleep time to get a more useful graph. This has shown how you can connect multiple I2C peripheral devices to a Raspberry Pi Pico acting as a controller. It reads the temperature from the AM2320 sensor and then displays this on an SSD1306 LED display. Both these devices are on the same I2C bus and are referenced based on their address. Unfortunately, it's not possible to put two AM2320s or two SSD1306s as they all have the same address, which could otherwise conflict. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and a share. I'll be creating a future video based around the OLED displays with the Raspberry Pi and I'll be including more Pico or microcontroller projects as well. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.